hello students in the we have a new topic today uh, that is about uh, surveying <coughs> so the basically all the measurements which we do normally uh, are based upon linearity now uh, in this topic we are going to learn how do we measure in vertical axis normally if you want to measure any uh, a line say for example if there is a point a here and uh, and if there is a point b here you can measure the distance from a to b using chain or a chip and this we have studied in in the previous uh, in the previous classes now if you want to calculate the distances in vertical axis let us say this is how the cross section of ground is now here you have a b point and here you have an a point now if you want to calculate the difference between a to b in vertical axis the leveling is done so the basic difference is that the the below diagram uh, whatever i have shown you the here the a point and b points are normally in a straight direction in a, in a in a plain ground level you know we, we can write in this in, in a plain ground level here it's not plain it's it's uh, it's irregular so if uh, and uh, the type of leveling the art of determining the relative positions is what we defined as the surveying so we are relative relating a point b with reference to a or we are relating a point b with the difference to point b in vertical axis so so in vertical axis whatever we do is called the leveling so i hope that this slides gives you the enough idea what actually leveling means so in, let us go through the dim, uh, to some typical definitions so in leveling uh, normally we have few definitions so let us say uh, this as a tripod we have tripod for tripod we set up a dumpy level or an auto level on a plain ground level so these are the majority we uh, we use two types so one is uh, dumpy level and another is auto level so uh, which is set up on a tripod so after all temporary adjustments done so we what are temporary adjustments sorry i'm not that much fair in uh, writing with mouse so temporary adjustments are the adjustments which you do for any instrument before starting before uh, before you start making the uh, re uh, noting down the readings so temporary once again i repeat temporary adjustments or the adjustments which you done to any instrument to any instrument before taking readings so the normally this uh, has a process where we have two to three points one is uh, leveling centering and focusing we have three types again so leveling focusing centering are the three uh, process which we do in the temporary adjustment there the leveling is different the, le the leveling uh, in the context we are speaking about the instrument so if you are taking if you are talking about leveling the setting up of bubble to the center is what we call as a leveling 
then we are calling centering centering is means that you are leveling a, a an instrument which is centered to a ground station point right so that is called centering then we are then focusing after level the instrument which is centered to a ground point now you are focusing to a point to get the reading so before taking the readings the adjustments whatever you have done before are called as temporary adjustments after doing all those temporary adjustments the the definitions which we normally come across in leveling are reduce level benchmark back side then we have foresight intermediate side height of instrument so these are the common uh, words which we come across um, leveling so le reduce level is nothing but say for example if you want to find out this is my instrument here and this is my ground point this is what i have i need to find out the level at this point and this is ground this is a road so i want to find out my point b to how much the difference in level from the road this is what i want to find whether it can be 0.3 point 0.2 meters or 1.2 meters it can be 3 point meters how much is the, the different vertical distance between the road top level to the point b that is what i need to find out so when you are finding out this point you need to have certain level or a reference point which you can find out the differences say for example if i have a point of 100 if i if i know the if i know the reduced level of some point then i can start finding out the level differences at all other points like what i am the example i've given you the level I, I want to find out the level difference of point b level difference of point b with the help of the level of top level of road so this is my reference point right and this is what my target point so so if you the point of reference or the point of known refer known elevation known values which can be either to uh, reference to the main sea level where we actually take it as a 0 0.000 or with reference to some other known height then that point is called as a reduced level clear so what we are doing is we are reducing the level of some point with a known reference right so now my road is my benchmark my road is now a benchmark and i am reducing the point b level so which we are called as a reduced level so difference you need to understand what is a benchmark and what is a reduced level so the point uh, you have reduced level of a point b with the help of a known elevation i have reduced the level of point b with the known reference point point uh, benchmark then that is called as a reduced level so the reduced level of point b i can calculate with the benchmark value of road top level so the de by definition we can speak uh, the elevation of a point with respect to either mean sea level or with respect to a fixed point here fixed point is my benchmark of known light is called as reduced level then we have a benchmark benchmark i have already said this benchmark is again related to some other point so this may be related to um, the as i spot msl so mean sea level or anything else those these benchmarks we have many types we have temporary benchmarks we have permanent benchmarks we have gts benchmarks we have gps benchmarks so we do have many types so these benchmarks are reference points 
so benchmark is really a permanent point of reference whose uh, elevation with respect to some datum is known then we have a back set the first reading the first reading which you take on a benchmark is called as a back set right the first reading which you take on a back set is called a benchmark then the last reading no matter how many intermediate sites you have the last reading which you take from the instrument is called as a foresight so we we have a very less time we will we'll go through a quick way okay then uh, the height of instrument is called as the it is a reducer level of line of sight the reducer level of line of sight so if this is my line of sight so if I am able to tell the level of this line of sight this is my line of sight so if I able to tell this line level of this line then that is called as height of instrument so you can calculate height of instrument with these formulas then uh, if you have a series of intermediate sites if you have into the series of uh, um, sorry if you have a series of back sites then if you have if you have a series of intermediate sites then if you say uh, have a series of four sites then you have an arithmetic check where the summation of back sites and the summation of four sites is equals to last regi last readings reduce level minus first readings reduce level so uh, this is the summation just to make the mention the calculations whatever you have done is right okay uh, then we have uh, this reciprocal leveling right then uh, the reciprocal is normally done uh, when you have a river between them right so when you have a river a river between them you take the readings at a to b then you shift your instrument from a to b and from b you take readings to a so the difference in the the true difference between the a point a and b can be calculated using this formula whatever i've given here right so that is called a reciprocal reciprocal done is it where reciprocal done reciprocal leveling whatever i'm speaking now reciprocal leveling is done where you have reverse so obstacles in between them but the vision is there always the vision is always there okay <clears throat> then you can you always expect some correction likewise in the previous uh, uh, lectures also you always expect some corrections to the whatever you have done so these corrections we need to correct so normally uh, the first type of corrections we get as curvature correction so you know earth is a curve and when you set up an instrument the the line is always an horizontal so but it is always curved so you get some uh, difference or uh, some corrections so your line is always straight to certain extent after that whatever you are projecting your line it is you are getting an error and error is increasing with the progress of your length so the the distance or the the level the curvature correction whatever i have written here if your instrument is at a and you you ac is your line of sight and bc is your curvature correction <coughs> and if you have the standard value radius of earth then curvature correction is given by it is always negative so minus 0 0.078490 square where this is in kilometers then you have refraction what is a refraction when your line of set passes through a series of air say for example i have uh, air here right have, which is having particulate matter which is having some something else something else something i have so my line of <coughs> my line of sight is passing through a series of air 
Where is that? So I am able to read my instrument is it here, right? And I am able to take the readings. So what what I see when your eyepiece or the objective glass, whatever it is there, it may be refracted to the air bubbles or the particulate matter in the air. So that correction is approximately given by uh, one by seventh of of curvature of correction. It's relative correction but uh, it is uh, we don't have uh, we don't that much <coughs> research is not there to calculate uh, the exact amount of refraction but so we do relate to the refraction correction with the help of curvature correction okay so it is one by seventh of coefficient of curvature <coughs> next we have a combined correction if you add them up then you'll get the combined correction like uh, like we do have here right? just we are added them next is the very important thing uh, many of students does not able to answer this uh, topic sensitiveness of bubble what is the sensitiveness of bubble so the sensitiveness of bubble is defined <coughs> the angular value of one division of a bubble tube say I'll show it <clears throat> this is a perfectly straight line say for example okay uh, I'll, I'll uh, seriously draw a straight line no problem uh, shapes yeah I got a straight line so I have a perfect straight line now I'll, I'll, I'll get rid of this now you can never expect a bubble to be in a straight line so it, it 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 shall be some deviated some angle right and this right this may be deviated in this location or your bubble may be deviated in this location so there is always an expectation of deviation or the the uh, the uh, the the level of your bubble so so to understand it, it's a quite it's a quite big thing. But the the problem is, if you understand the exact value of it, or so this is exact a level line, and this is the level of bubble. So, for these adjustments, we do have three foot screws. I think you you all know quite very well, right? So we have three foot screws, right? So one of uh, uh, one uh, all of them arranged in this position for the perfect alignment. So when you are uh, rotating these uh, bubble um, uh, levels the the sensitive the bubble will move forward and backward so say for example I, i'll draw a, a bubble shape for you so this if this is my bubble and let us say this is i'll format it by not filling anything inside fill no fill done and then I do have a inside a small curve, right? And let us say this has bubble. So this bubble moves this side or this side, so based of it. So if you look at the top diagram, if my level is in this position, so bubble moves towards this side, right? So the how much, and you can if you are adjusting it, you can see the lines here. If you are happen to adjust the learning, you can see small small reading. You have so many readings this side, then you have a center location one reading, then you have here, then you have here, and so many readings you have, right? 
so this why these readings are given to you why what, what is the necessity of giving this reading so your your bubble has some sensitiveness to this and that sensitive it is moving this this side to moving this side and that angular value whatever it, it is defined this is zero degrees this is this is 20 seconds and this is 40 seconds let us say that is and this is again 20 seconds and this is 40 seconds the angular value of one division of bubble tube one division of bubble tube if it, this is at 20 seconds and if i have a 20 uh, uh, readings small small readings then each bubble says that it is one second the this sensitive the how much seconds a bubble can move the how many seconds the bubble can move some some bubble even uh, can be seen for five seconds right so five seconds also you can have for one second also we can have so the 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 how much sensitive your bubble is the how much that that much the sensitivity is less let us say the show bubble if your instrument is having 0.5 seconds of sensitiveness that shows that your instrument can be leveled to developed perfectly right if your bubble uh, has at five seconds in the, in the previous day as a 0.5 seconds if i am increasing it to five seconds now which means i can level level perfectly but not that much perfectly as it is before so this sensitiveness of this is the sensitivity so a sensitive bubble is defined as the angular value of one division right so i hope that this video has given you some idea about sensitivity and uh, the, the basic definition and all the things so in the next class we'll uh, study about uh, um, contouring